Hello guys and welcome back to Tierspec TV. Yet another episode, yet another day, yet another episode on the Creeper. Now, today, or this episode is going to be a bit more special because things are actually happening now. Uh, I got the axles done. I used about the last three days to get those done. Uh, and I've got the chassis down now and I'm starting to put the axles under the chassis to then have a rolling chassis, which is going to be pretty cool. And another thing, another great item have uh, arrived in the post. I'm going to tell a bit more about that later. But first we need to get the axles onto the chassis and that way we can get a rolling chassis. And then tomorrow we'll go ahead and have a look at making the engine mount and gearbox mount for the BMW uh, gearbox and the uh, uh, Nissan Skyline uh, engine in the front. Uh, so I'm going to go outside now and have a quick look at how far I've gotten. So as you can see right now, we've got the chassis outside. Uh, it's not galvanized yet. It will be galvanized once we've made all the uh, mats for the engine and gearbox. I've just started to put on the first front axle here. Nice new shiny bits. All of them are galvanized. It's galvanized in stainless steel. Stainless steel. Stainless steel. Uh, and I've got these skaters here as well, on the front bit, to stop mud and, uh, and stuff going into the swivels. Other than that, the axles are completely new, more or less. The only thing I want to replace, uh, of course, the brakes. I haven't got any brakes on right now, just using the old ones for mock-up. But uh, it is the new hops, as they are quite old. One sit in here. I want new ones of those. Uh, otherwise, the brackets here, all new. YRM Metal Solutions, hook me up with a complete pair of that bit, that bit, that bit, all of them brand new, both on the front and the rear axle. Uh, so internals are still stuck, they'll probably break, but for now we're going to be running them and okay, see how much they can hold. But right now I need to get that axle onto that chassis and then get that axle down onto the rear bit get that on and mount the wheels as well as you can see over there and as you can see I've got all the bits and bobs for it here so I've probably got the rest of the day doing stuff uh, or just assembling it and then tomorrow we will go ahead and mount up the engine on probably those holes here and the gearbox should be one of these holes here along down there and as well I've also got the cross member here I'll put into it and use that so as you can see, I've got quite a bit of work for uh, in front of me right now, but I'm just going to pull you up over there in the corner, record me, and then we'll do a little montage of me putting things together. So now I should have front bit on but as you can see it's not all the way compressed here and I can't get the bottom bit on so right now I'll just put the nut onto it just to make sure it's not gonna roll out again so next up we'll be cranking up the rear of the chassis to put a bit more weight on the front uh, so I'm just gonna get some axle stands underneath here lift them up put some weight down there and hopefully we'll be able to do up the nuts on both sides Now that should hopefully level it out a tiny bit. So now we should have more weight up on the front here. Like there. Otherwise I might just have to push a bit back and forwards to get it to line up. That should be a problem. So I spent about 20 minutes trying to get one of these bolts on but as you can see I can't get it I think it's a two-man job to get it on so next up we'll start on the trailing arms going from that bracket onto the chassis there for that I've got a pair of original trailing arms here nice and painted and for those of course need some pushes and I went with Flowflex oh, not sponsored or anything but I just didn't genuinely think they're quite good Oh, I just want to focus right now. There we go, Flow Flex. So I've got a whole kit, a big kit to do with uh, everything you need for it. So you just need to go dig through these, figure out which, which one matches into those holes and the rear bit. 
and throw them right on. So it's been quite a lot of hours since you last saw me. The sun is going down just about and I have had a big fight with one of the bolts and I still haven't won yet. Uh, so let's just jump out and have a quick look and see where I am at now. So going around here, I've got the front axle in, got the right side, or sorry, left side in, both the bolts and bushes and everything, but this side, the right side, this little bleepy me bleep just does not want to go in. As you can see on the other side, it is far from lined up as it should. You see it about there. I've tried pretty much every single tool I've got in my toolbox and even sharpening the bolt that's going through a bit just to make it easier but I just can't get it to line up. So we'll skip that after about two hours of trying. I've gone ahead to the rear axle, got trailing arm, trailing arm, plate. I forgot to order the, uh, uh, the retainer for the spring so A I can make my own or B I can order one from YIM Metal Solutions. The same goes to the uh, holders here both for the suspension and the A-frame bolts. I've got the A-frame and the bushes and everything for them and the same with the suspension bits but I just haven't got the bolts for them and I want to, them to be stainless steel so I might just order them and wait for them to arrive. Uh, I can still move about with the chassis and the only main bit I want is the front axle to see that's not hitting the sump a bulkhead as well and the front which is going to go on here and that bit. Those uh, three bits are quite important for me to line up the engine and gearbox configuration. Uh, that is where I am at now. the rear chassis or sorry the rear uh, axles is now mounted to the chassis I haven't done them up 200% the newton meters or three ugu doobies but I've done enough for now and again I haven't got the locking bracket down there just two stainless steel bolts battery about to run out so I'm gonna go ahead and charge this and plug another battery in and then I'm gonna take that dirty stupid thing out again take up the front of the crane pull it this way out, uh, see if I can't get that guy in, you can see how much I've hit it compared to the other side. Get that guy in, redo it, push it underneath, get it down and see if I can't get those. It really irritates me, I can't get those on there at the bottom of the springs. Once the those are on, should be all good. As you can see, these are the one inch lowered springs, so it actually sits quite nicely close to the ground. Like the ground clearance is not that great. See from here to here. That's a really, really bad explanation, but it really is quite close to the ground. Ridge is looking very, very good. In the future I want to go air suspension so I can uh, adjust the ride height whenever I go back here or when I'm at the track. But right now we're just doing the sprit part. One inch lowering springs that will do for now. So yeah, I'll swap batteries, take front axle out again, see if I can get that thing on, put it back in, tighten everything up, and push it in there and go up to the other line and take the engine out and connect all the different adapters, two adapters, three different vehicles, two gearboxes. It's gonna be great. Uh, so I need to get those done for tomorrow so we can start lining everything up, put the bulkhead on, do an unwrapping of that, explaining a bit who it is, who made it, and so on. Uh, so we'll do that. I'm going to swap batteries, get working, stop talking. So now I've got it out of the chassis. I'm going to go ahead and lever that thing up and down will hopefully line up the holes down there. If not, I will have to get a bit creative. That seems to have done it. 
went ahead and sharpened the bolt even more so it looks like some kind of vampire killing spear thing. Uh, I would like it to go through the other side as you can see. You've got the, the bolt hit there, but here's on that side. But I think I can survive that. Morning guys, it's now the next day. Uh, I'm already up here doing the first job, which is getting the LT. Uh, 230 or the LT77 which was connected up to a uh, 3.9 Rover V8 but that engine is not there anymore you can take some guesses where that, where that engine is going now uh, but still got an LT230 laying up here might as well use that for mock-up uh, I'm gonna get a completely rebuilt one either by uh, what they called Ashcroft or Winchester Gears one of those two companies probably gonna build me a brand new box uh, when it comes to that but right now we're gonna use it for mock-up we're doing all the uh, the mounts for it it's located in here all the way in the back, so I'm just going to take all my tools, go in there, start taking it all apart, and probably see you down uh, by the yard once I've uh, done that job. Shouldn't take long, it's just five bolts and pull it out. So guys, it's now about five or six hours later uh, than last time you saw me. Everybody gone home, the sun's going down, uh, and I didn't really record anything uh, because there wasn't really anything to record. I've just been around doing small jobs but I did get one thing done which is marry up the LT230 to the GS6 BMW gearbox with the Synchro gearbox uh, adapter kit here I already showed you yesterday it came with the bolts for it there was six bolts in total and the uh, shaft uh, connecting this bit to this bit a really really easy kit the only thing I uh, found was that I had to grind a bit more material off here it had like a knob coming out right there that would just hit onto this uh, this bit here so I ground a bit off and uh, as well as the bolts uh, catching onto the plate itself up there so next time I have to put these two together I'll have to take the plate and uh, make a little groove in it and use uh, Ellen Hex uh, bolts or something like that to make it as low pro profile as possible and the only you know, job of the bolts here, I'd pretty much hold the plate in so oil doesn't spill out. It's like a small inspection hole. Of course, also taking that apart, you can uh, disconnect the linkage in there. But that is pretty much what I've done in the last six hours, just connecting those two together. Uh, it did take some time, and that thing is really heavy, and that thing is really heavy, so it's, it's not a lot of fun putting it in place. But now those two are together, that's going to be the total length of the uh, gearbox. Uh, which is not that bad. Uh, it's a bit longer than an R380, uh, but not a lot. You can see the belt now seems really, really short compared to the to the actual Skyline gearbox, which is all right back here. And for the shifter mechanism, which is here, I'm going to purchase through uh, Synchro Gearboxes a uh, uh, an adapter kit for it, so I can probably take that bit off uh, and then mount the original uh, Defender gear lever and stick all the way up here. So it'll be a bit more center position. Next up, the engine. Taking it down from the stand, taking the turbo off. Uh, I'm just prepping the rear bit of the engine for opening that box, which is all the uh, clutch bits and flywheel uh, for marrying the Nissan engine to the BMW gearbox. Uh, I found this company called PMC Motorsport. There they are. They do all sorts of uh, conversion kits for different JDM uh, or V8 or LSN or whatever you want um, and I found one that makes that engine marry up to that gearbox so everything should be in here really nice CNC made quite expensive but you know stuff like this just costs money uh, it does require you to have this which is the uh, automatic gearbox flex plate which lovely mine one came with uh, so I'm going to use that to drive the uh, starter motor off to connect into the gears here and actually start the engine. So that's the only requirement to have. Uh, otherwise everything else should be in this rather heavy box. That's together with the BMW Saks Stage 3 clutch. I think I went for that should be enough to take the panel of this going to be delivered through there. So last job for today is to get that stuff mounted onto the rear of that engine and marry those two up together and then tomorrow we're going to try and drop the whole thing into the chassis and as you can see here, the engine maps uh, they do, do look quite promising. Uh, if it can stay within the frames, both sides would just have to make a bit of an angle piece holding on to this bit and otherwise just make a, uh, a plate that we can then bolt onto the side in here. 
of this chassis pulled uh, that way and that way. But of course, fitment have to be controlled after we put in the bulkhead, the front of it, and then align the engine back and forth, up and down, uh, so we can clear the bonnet when that closing, and the sub clears the axle on the rear. So quite a lot of factors going into uh, placing this engine in there, but right now I'm going to take the studs out and open that box have a look what's inside and hopefully mount everything on there. That should be the end goal of today. Just went ahead and opened up the box and here is the flywheel. And with that, something I not expected, but we actually, actually got some small PMC Motorsport goodies here. I don't know what it is. Caramel or something like that. Oh, definitely gonna go ahead and try it. Other than that, we got the whole PMC kit inside this box. Comes really, really nice here. A logo right there and a nice protecting plate here for it. And down here we just got the, you know, a genuine uh, BMW sax clutch here, which should just be able to mount it straight on after we have placed the adapter kit onto it first. Uh, so I um, don't know if I should place the clutch on now or wait until we do the final assembly of the whole thing, but I might have just put, you know, the main gearbox and the uh, engine, put those together now as a permanent uh, make. Uh, but have a look how difficult it is but nice I like that going down to the next layer here we've got the ring that will actually make you no know, physical contact to the engine on one side and to the gearbox on the other side and here these two small packs which was uh, packed in a small this container right here laying down at the bottom bit we've got the bolts needed for it we've got a new uh, stretch bolt for the uh, flywheel uh, sorry the flex leg uh, and all the other mounting hardware to go in through these different holes. I don't think it's a manual telling you what hole needs what bolt, so it's kind of like trial and error, I think, but it shouldn't be too hard, even though that's a lot of bolts. We'll figure it out first, let's get this plate mounted. I've we'll just put the first adapter plate on here. And again, this is a PMC right there, really nice touch. Uh, and right here, as you can see, it says RB25 to M57N. Uh, 8 HP. All the holes uh, right now seems to be lining up perfectly. Uh, the only thing is that I might have to do a bit of cutting on uh, this side right down here but I think I've seen other people do the same uh, swap. I didn't have to cut anything off here but we'll have to wait and see if the uh, star motor is sitting here will then go in and foul on the edge here but that should be a big problem to just cut that open uh, for now. I don't think I'll be running any clutch inside of it. I'm just going to smack that thing onto that thing and have it as a, a unit here because as you can see on the inside it is still quite gross and filthy uh, looking. I don't want to throw my clutch in there, my brand new clutch after I open it. Uh, but in the kit should also be a new throw our bearing and all this good stuff in here. Uh, so I'm going to tighten up the bolts here and then just smack that gearbox onto that plate and mount that up. Uh, with the rest of the screws uh, and then we should be ready to mount in here for tomorrow so guys we're now at day three at assembling this car Liam's now finally off work so he can help me doing the uh, camera stuff and lif lifting the heavy weights around uh, next up is unboxing this box over here and you already know what it is it's a galvanized the bulkhead uh, we got reached out by a Shielder chassis in the Northern Ireland uh, and they asked if they would uh, or if we would like to receive the sponsor gift of them uh, in form of a Series 3 rare six cylinder galvanized bulkhead for left hand drive. Uh, they're doing right now a product range, they have made six until now for sort of testing uh, of it and they were kind enough to uh, ship one off to us uh, which is really really nice uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, unravel it first and have a look at it i haven't seen it yet it's just been standing here for the last uh, two weeks outside in the rain uh, but again it's galvanized so you don't really have to think about the weather or anything but we're going to unbox it now have a look at it and see what kind of differences there is on this type of bulkhead and the other one we got in the barn right now for the uh, series 3 uh, part of it As you can see, for this purpose of the six cylinder, 
what they mainly have done is move this wall further into the uh, compartment of the uh, cabin and as well a bit of the footwell on the side to kind of move the engine as far back as possible because normally it would be about here the wall coming down uh, so it's quite nice and it should also fit the standard series 3 interior on the other side uh, so this is definitely the model that we are going for and as well left hand drive uh, we've got place here for the battles coming through and uh, nothing on the side really really nice piece of kit now normally when the well of these are do up in, uh, in jigs so that will say they're all going to be looking the same uh, once they come out from you know welding a process and after that they're going to go ahead and galvanize and what normally happens when you galvanize metal that's not that thick compared to the footwells here is that it's going to deform because of the intense heat they're going through so what you normally see when people do a poor job of welding uh, and haven't got a jig a proper jig to uh, put them on and now for that go ahead and weld it you're going to have a big difference on this side and that side on mounting onto the chassis and that's going to really uh, put people off uh, from buying it and i've seen a lot of discussions going ahead on the, on facebook and the different uh, uh, pages going like where should i get my ball kit from and so on but i'm going to have a look at this and as in right now the welds look really clean and the, the galvanizing looks like a really good job uh, but the only true fitment is when we put it onto the frame how badly warped is going to be. There might possibly be a tiny bit of warping. You cannot, you know, compensate that when you do the galvanizing process of it. But the better job of welding the different places in, uh, and then do the galvanizing, the less you're going to have a distortion of the metal. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and try and mount it and after that have a look. But Sheila chassis are renowned for doing uh, both uh, uh, chassis, uh, galvanized, ungalvanized, and the bulkheads for pretty much everything Land Rover Defender series have ever been made. Uh, they're looked in, uh, in Northern Ireland. So if you are on the lookout for a chassis or bulkhead or anything like that, go ahead and give them a call or go into their website. They've got a whole range of everything. The website is really nice to kind of go around and, uh, and see what you need. And if they haven't got it, just go ahead and ask them. Uh, but as I said, they've made six of these six cylinder bulkheads for now as a testing phase. So soon these should be up as well for purchase if you are in the need of one as well. And the whole reason for the six cylinder, of course, is that we've got a six cylinder RB, not the standard 2.6 Land Rover engine, but that's a quite a bit longer. I got extra two cylinders, so we need to push it forward or backwards as much as possible for that way to have place for intercooler, radiator, and oil cooler, uh, where this should be doing the job just fine. So, yeah, next up, cutting these zip ties off and actually going in and placing it onto the chassis. So now we've got the engine and gearbox of the whole drivetrain lifted into the, the chassis. The only problem right now we have is the rear drum brake hitting on this uh, A-frame bit sitting here. Uh, that should be the only issue we're dealing with right now. Otherwise the front bit clears and we should have enough uh, space in the front to have a, an intercooler and a, an oil engine cooler fitted. So right now it's pretty much just a drum brake, but I'm going to be running the X-brake conversion kit, which should be a lot thinner. But I don't know if it's big in diameter. If it is, we might have a clearance uh, issue on that. But as in right now, the thing actually fits in here and should be able to make everything uh, work out fine. But it's a really, really, really tight space. So we really need to think about when we do the engine mount and uh, gearbox mount and how we're going to put it up. Well, otherwise, we have to redo it later on, which I don't want because the frame is going to get galvanized. But as in right now, everything uh, fits. And I'm pretty sure the uh, bulkhead will fit just fine with the engine in front. Uh, so we're going to do the last measurements and have a look and see if the axle actually clears the front of the sump uh, and the same as the rear drum brake uh, fits and we've got enough space on the front for all the accessories we're going to be running for the engine. Uh, so right now it's looking okay. Not perfect, but okay. I think we can, uh, we can do with that. So we're now entering the last bit of the third day of mounting your stuff onto the car. As for now, we got the engine, the gearbox lined up in a roughly the position we wanted to. Uh, and we have made the uh, rear bridge for the uh, gearbox mounting. We're going to have a whole bridge going underneath it. And on that, we're going to have the gearbox mounts coming off too. And the engine mounts, we unfortunately couldn't uh, use the old ones that came off the car itself. So we're going to have to make some new ones with a piece of a uh, tube and some uh, polyurethane bushes going into it and then the tube going on the engine. So I've made uh, both of the brackets that sit onto the side of the engine that we're going to be welding on. Uh, and then we're just going to 
be placing a bracket on this side, drill some holes so we can bolt it on and off. So in the future, if I find out I don't want this to run this engine anymore, just pull it out and put whatever other engine I want in without having to cut in the nice galvanizing steel, uh, which it will be once we have made all the uh, parts fit up. We're going to take everything apart again and take the chassis up, get it galvanized, get it back, and from there on and forwards, we have the, everything we put onto the car will hopefully just stay there for, for the future. But for right now, there's a load of factors we have to think in when doing this. Uh, firstly is will it clear the axle and that is yes as it is right now we'll see the steering box which is yes we'll be pulling the engine a bit towards this side uh, come back to the rear here the six cylinder bulkhead was was the right choice indeed because it'll clear it right here and we got enough space in the front to have the uh, intercooler and the uh, engine uh, radiator sitting in front in the back we'll have the shifter assembly sitting roughly about here where these two bolts are. Uh, this again is uh, supplied by uh, Synchro gearboxes. Uh, I'm gonna buy the adapter kit for it as well so I can get the R380 uh, gear stick and high low range sitting about here, which should be fine uh, from the seat box and all that. And the next step was getting the drum brake here to go past the cross member sitting back here, which is supporting the A-frame, which we just put on for measurement and seeing if everything would line up. Uh, as it is right now, the only problem is the axle. The, I've got some guys to weld it up at a local machine shop, but they put on the uh, spring mounts at an angle uh, a bit too much because I need the uh, differential here, the output of the differential to aim a bit upwards to be able to cope with the angle of the gearbox. Otherwise, uh, the prop shaft will not work or will wear out very quickly. So as right now, I think I'm just gonna make two, what you call it like, flat pieces of a metal and gonna cut it down on one side it's gonna be like an angle like a door stop uh, and I'm gonna put that in between here so I'm gonna raise up one side and the other side gonna be flat and that way we can kind of angle the differential in the right direction and that way we can put on the prop shaft without actually destroying it from the first launch 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 <laughs> first launch of it but that is how far we've got now uh, just show the piece that our Grand that a morpher made. Make this piece here, the bridge that goes beneath it, and hopefully, then we can do the mounting of the original mount on that side from the LT230. And on the Synchro Gearboxes adapter kit, there's also made two holes here into the aluminium, which it makes us capable of putting a mount here. And then those two mounts are just going to be going onto this plate, and we can just weld on this, you know, get a, the proper ankle off it for the receiving end of it. Uh, and these holes are already pre-cut in the chassis, as you can see here. So we just need to make those mount up. We only have to cut the bottom holes, I think, for it. Uh, but that will be fine for that. And also the exhaust manifold. I can't fit it right now because the engine hoist here is holding onto the brackets of it. But otherwise, uh, we'll have to see if the exhaust manifold can actually fit onto it. Uh, as in for right now. The turbo is top mounted which is a good thing because we got loads of clearance here. The bonnet is going to be about here. So we got loads of clearance for the turbo to sit underneath. Uh, same goes with the downpipe that's going to be shooting pretty much straight down here and that side down. Uh, not in between this bit will be too narrow I think. Uh, and here you can see the plate of fitter for the engine mount to go. And the steer box, steering box here just about clears the servo pump here, we might have to push the engine a bit like that and then that will go an angle directly up to this hole where the steering cone is going to go down into this guy and then that will turn freely. All the holes and everything uh, from the chassis just works like all the holes here mount up no problem with that whatsoever and if you don't know this chassis is from a designer chassis uh, he's an, uh, a guy who have made uh, plenty of these chassis and convert them from you know the, the leaf springs onto the power steering and coil spring conversions but everything else is a series bolt on and also the rear cross member you can uh, choose to leave it off or get the on, bolt on and off version of it so he's a really nice guy chatting to and getting that done and of course we've got the nice bulk here from the shield the chassis uh, I didn't mention but in here it actually says everything you kind of need to know for installing it and uh, 
what kind of things you need and if you're going to drill extra holes how they're going to be so that's a really nice little information they uh, they post with it so just read that through and you're not in doubt what is going to happen so this will hopefully last for many many years to come uh, without watching up because what you normally see is right here in the corners it will start eating away and the foot will start eating away but now it's all galvanized steel which is pretty much a coating of liquid metal they put over it and that will then protect the the strength which is uh, beneath it it's quite quite nice to have so there's definitely a nice add-on <laughs> a big shout out to shield the chassis in ireland for catching out and getting us getting us one of those here and until now we just bolted straight on like nothing had to be done lift it in place put the bolt through just sitting there next up we'll be lining up the doors where we can maybe see a bit of a uh, warpage coming in but again if you do poor welding from the start and then you start galvanizing it those like one or two millimeters off will then become four millimeters off and then you're going to have a problem so right now it just bolts straight on uh, and you've got the extra depth of it we've got extra clearings here on the uh, intake manifold side for running a fuel system and the hoses up through that the only problem is going to be the downpipe but i think i'm going to leave the downpipe coming down here into that bit uh, underneath it but again that's not so important again or i could maybe just twist it around we'll figure that out at some point Again, do, doing a project like this, you have to take one thing at a time, because you've got to say, oh, I need to do that, I need to do that, I need to do that. Just focus on doing one thing, but and the engine mounts are quite crucial because everything has to match up. Once those are welded on, uh, you can't really undo it. The engine sits where it is. The rest of it kind of has to be molded around it to make it fit. So as of right now, I really would like to get the servo pump mounted over here where the air conditioning pump was, but it, it is much uh, like I can do it with it on this side, but again, you just have to get the mounts in the correct position. But as of right now, we're still hoping for that Monday, uh, the end of Easter, hopefully this whole chassis and engine will just be able to roll out from here and up into the other uh, garage where we can put it and store it for the next time I got some uh, time off to fix it. Uh, so that is what we are working towards now. But I think this will be the end of episode one. We, we started out with only the axles and we have ended now with a rolling chassis with the engine and gearbox floating inside of it. So I would say that's a, that's a, quite, that's a quite big of a, a process. Uh, we've done a quite big step up. Uh, and it's just nice to have something that's actually assembled as a car now uh, and not just parts laying in the corner of some barn. But I think we'll call that done for this episode. Uh, then next episode, we'll probably do the uh, engine mount, gearbox mounts, and then we will take everything apart to get this chassis galvanized. And from there on, it's just building and building and building. My first thought and my first project is to actually get the engine to start. That will be a huge milestone. So once everything is mounted up, uh, mounts are made, all that, and I get the intercooler and radiator mount, I'll go straight ahead and uh, get this car up to the uh, tuners, and they'll do all the wiring and relays and ECU and so on, uh, just to be able to start the engine every single time we work on it, just to hear it, hear it start. I think it'll be a big big turning point for this project but for now we'll just start doing mounts or mounts and mounts and mounts so i think that was everything from uh, this time guys i'll see you next time around